The console monitoring has three independent sets of monitor outputs. Surround monitoring is via the primary main monitor output, which has dedicated front panel controls above the center section fader strips. Main level control, master cut and dim, are supplemented by individual speaker mutes, which can be utilized as solo switches, stereo phase check, speaker swap, and mono and stereo compatibility down mixes. A second stereo mini monitor output can be used simply as near field monitoring using the flip switch, which routes the primary monitor source to the secondary monitor outputs, or as an independent monitor feed with separate source selection and level control. Source selection for both monitor outputs is via a set of on-screen touch keys located next to the AFL and PFL bus metering. Each output has access to four sources. The first two are common to both outputs and are the main program bus monitor feeds upstream of tone and talkback injection. The second pair of inputs can access any internal or external source via the routing menu. The source selectors for the main monitor output into cancel, whereas the secondary monitor output selectors can be toggled off to mute the mini output. Four 12-way source selectors are available as monitor or general purpose source pre-selectors. Output metering is displayed for each selector at the base of the touch screen, together with the current source indication. Touching the meter brings up the selector pop-up. Selector 1 supports 5.1 sources, 2, 3 and 4 are for stereo sources only and selectors 1 and 2 support source summing. Touching the AFL-PFL meter area selects the monitor control pop-up. A switched 5.1 insert point with an additional stereo return, plus mono from left, mono from right options for both the main and mini monitor outputs can be controlled from the pop-up. All the functions can also be assigned to the center section user keys. With the setup function active, touching the AFL-PFL meter displays the monitor setup page for stereo AFL-PFL routing options. PFL can route to a third monitor output if required, which in turn can also receive a separate monitor signal. AFL uses the main or mini monitor outputs only. Two further stereo outputs, comms 1 and 2, can be configured as additional monitor outputs. Primarily intended for production areas or machine rooms, both outputs can accept talkback and can be linked to the on-air logic to automatically mute when designated sources are live. Each output has two mixable inputs, mono switching and talkback inject. Input gain and output metering are displayed on the screen next to the external selector metering. The final area of the touchscreen displays input metering for the 16 direct bus access channels, or DBAs as they are termed. These provide direct to bus access for all the console buses for injecting additional signals which do not require standard channel processing or control options. Each input has a gain control, either from the center section master encoder or from a channel strip if required, AFL monitor plus an on switch. Adjacent channels can be gain linked for returning stereo or surround sources to the buses. DBAs can be controlled from the console faders. The center section free controls, an array of 16 keys with four character labels next to the monitor controls, provide a tactile interface for functions normally controlled from the touch screen. The free keys are arranged in six banks of 10, and both the bank keys and the free keys can be relabeled with usernames. Programming is similar to the channel strip free controls. Activate the touch screen free key, select the free control to be programmed, then navigate to the touch function to be assigned. A list-based selection of additional control functions can be found in the MISC menu pop-up. Full system configurations are saved as projects and can be recalled as required via the load and save keys in the touchscreen menu bar. Projects can contain multiple versions and the various elements in a project can be loaded individually to recall specific settings. Projects can be archived to any external storage media via the server network interface. As well as user save projects, a background restore project is continually updated with the current state of the console to ensure that the console returns precisely to its last configuration following loss of power or a user-initiated shutdown.
This background project also synchronizes the slave system when the redundant processor option has been specified. The background project ensures that the slave processor settings match the main console, and sync status is permanently displayed at the top of the audio subgroup display on the touchscreen. Within a project, the console channel and output settings can be stored as snapshots and recalled in real time via the snapshot manager. A scrolling list, controlled by the master encoder, stores 128 snapshots which can be renamed, duplicated, and reordered to create a sequential playlist when mixing complex live productions with multiple segments. Snapshots are recalled using the master encoder switch, with the option to automatically advance to the next snapshot in the list for full incremental recall. GPI and user key recall of any of the 128 entries in the snapshot list is also possible. And channels can be isolated from a snapshot recall using the dedicated protect key on the channel strip. The channel center section protect menus offer further options to isolate specific console elements from a recall.